Hello, and welcome to Mr. Splatchel's channel, and I'm one of the Splatchel brothers. Today, we are playing a game called Risk Global Domination. I am a grand master in Risk. Now, I do have a free account, uh, so I've actually not purchased the game, so I don't play that often, uh, but I am currently ranked, I think, 850, and I have 29,530 rank points. The highest I've ever had is 30,000 700. Uh, to become a Grandmaster, you need to have 26,000 rank points. And generally speaking, when you play a ranked game, you will go up to uh, about 500 or 1,000 points, depending on the rank of the players you play against and how many of them that you play against. But generally speaking, Risk is con it's considered a game that you will play with six people and it will be a free-for-all. Now, there are, are odd game modes where you can play with three people, you can play a one versus one you can play with bots. Like, for example, for your pleasure today, I am playing with two bots, mainly just to explain the basics of the game. So, in this game, let's talk about the settings for a second, okay? Today, we are playing a game mode called World Domination. So, with World Domination, the goal is the risk that you all know and love if you've ever played the board game with your family. You are trying to take all the territories and you are trying to defeat all of your opponents. Now, in risk, the way you do this is you will have three phases every turn per player. You will have your draft stage, which is where you put your troops, so right here. Then you will have your attack stage, which is where you determine which troops you want to attack where and how much. Then you'll have your fortify stage, which is where you can move troops around. Specifically, you can take troops from one territory and move them to another territory that is connected to that territory. So you can only move one set of troops in one place to another place that is connected. So, right here, you will notice that I get five troops to place. Now, what determines the amount of troops you have to place? First, you get three for just simply existing, okay? Then you will get troops for each three additional territories you hold over nine. So if you'll notice right here, I have 12 territories. So when I have 12 territories, what that means is that I have three more territories than nine. So I get one additional troop per turn every, for every forever how long I'll hold that advantage. You also get troops if you're at the end of the order. So what you'll notice here is that red and green both attacked my territories and each other's territories to get to 15. But now because I'm last to go, I only have 12. So when you're last in the order, it's considered a disadvantage. So you get an additional troop or troops depending on how many players are in the game. So the next thing you need to worry about in a game like this is how do I coagulate all of my forces without losing them? So right now, if I look at, at the board, I've got a whole bunch of troops trapped in other people's things. So if I look at the board, I'm probably gonna lose this too because there's just no way I can get it out. Even if I put all my troops right here, I've got no easy way to get it out. So I'm pretty much gonna have to abandon this one. I could probably save this one, but it would be risky. And if I look at other places, it's probably not the most advantageous to even want to save this one because it's really not going to do anything for me. So the goal in Risk is, once again, to kill everybody, but to do that, you probably need to hold a bonus. Now, in this game mode, it's called Progressive. So what a bonus is, is these continents. If you hold all the territories in this continents, you get extra troops every turn that you hold these. Okay? So if you'll see, I have three out of the four South American territories, and there's only one troop there defending the last territory. So it's really important for me to go through and take this just to get more troops. Now on a map like Classic and a game like Progressive, you really don't need a bonus to do anything. You can win the game by having no bonus fairly easily. But when you're gifted one like this, you might as well take it. So in this game mode, we have what's called Auto Setup. So if you remember the Risk game that you played when you were a child, everybody chose their territories to start the game. But with this, it's completely automated and random. Kind of adds an additional layer of skill in. 
and it also kind of makes the the games progress just a little bit faster so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add one troop right here and attack this one okay the reason I added one troop is because we are dealing with what's called balanced blitz dice okay so the game of risk has made a formula to make it so it's not completely random okay so theoretically in a real game of risk you, you could you could have four troops attack one troop and that one troop could kill a hundred troops if it gets lucky enough what balance splits does is it says that is so statistically unlikely that we're not gonna let that happen okay so when you attack in risk you have what's called attackers advantage okay so I'm gonna place the rest of my troops just to, just to show you what attackers advantage looks like so if I have three attacking troops which means right now I have three attacking troops I've got if I've got four troops I have to leave at least one by one behind on the territory I attack from so that means I can attack with the other three so I've got one troop that stays behind the territory and three that attack so if I only had three troops I would only have two attacking troops so for each attacking troop I have up to three I get three dice if I have five troops I still have three dice okay so a defender however can only have up to two dice so if I've got a two like right here that defender would roll two dice now a defender will be able to get any ties okay so there's there's an inherent defenders advantage but the attackers advantage comes from the fact that you're rolling three dice so our three dice goes up against the defenders two dice so the attacker's advantage is the fact that when you roll your three dice, it's the your highest two dice versus the defender's highest two dice. If there's a tie, the tie goes the defender. However, it's considered an advantage for the attacker by about 15 to 20 percent. Okay, so if you have the choice between defending or attacking in this game mode, you will always be attacking because you get an advantage. Okay, so let's attack just to show you what it looks like. Okay. So this is what's called a balanced blitz. Now, let's just say if this right here was not 100%, let's say it was 36% and I really, really needed to roll it, okay? What you do is you hit this over and you do what's called a slow roll. What a slow roll does is it's always true random. In other words, the dice are always random. So theoretically, two of your dice could knock out 100 of the other player's dice if you're lucky enough, but that's... That would be very very lucky for you so you could do a slow roll but we're not going to do that this time we're just going to do a balanced blitz another thing you might notice over here is something called a slider this tells you how many troops that you can attack with so you have to attack with at least one you could attack with two which is wouldn't be impossible you actually have a nine percent chance of winning but it's considered unadvisable but what you always want to do with a slider is you want to roll it till you get the minimum amount of troops that you need for a 100% blitz. And the reason for this is because there's a quirk of the formula that they use. It makes it so if you have way too many troops, you could theoretically use more than is statistically possible if you do the minimum amount allowed. So if I go ahead and attack, I did not lose any troops there. Okay? So right now, I have the South American continent. Now, if I look at this bot, this bot has a four and a four. If the bot puts all the troops there, they'll have three troops. Actually, they're gonna have four troops. So they can hit this three and break my bonus, which I don't want to happen. So what I do is I go to my four to five phase, okay? I could attack more, but I don't need to. Now, there are two schools of thought. I could try to coagulate up here and make sure that these don't get hit, or I could try to defend my bonus. I feel like defending my bonus is more intelligent here because even if he puts all of his troops that he gets right here, he probably is not going to attack eight on five. It's definitely possible, but it's not a 100% roll. So, let's talk about the game modes for a second, okay? So what you'll notice is that because I just had a successful attack on a territory, I got what's called a card. So in risk, specifically in progressive risk, it's very important to get cards. So in progressive risk, every time someone in the game turns in a set of cards, they will uh, increase the bonus amount that you get from those cards. 
So, a set of cards is when you get three of the same type or one of each type. So in this case, there are cannons, there are cavalrymen, and there are infantrymen. Now, if we were playing fixed cards, you would get four cards from a set of infantry, you would get six cards from a set of cavalry, and you would get eight cards from a set of cannons. You would also get ten cards from a set of one each. But in progressive, it doesn't matter what set you have, just that you have a set. It is considered smarter, though, in progressive, is if you had a set of three of the same card, you use that one because it's more likely for you to have a set of something else afterwards. So what you'll notice now is that I have ten territories, I have South America, and I'm obviously still alive. So I get two from South America, I get three from existing, so I should have gotten five troops, which look, I did, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my five troops down. Now, there are a lot of places I can put my five troops, but what I'm gonna do is I wanna get this green four off my border, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna look right here. So if I look at it, this eight on four, it's a 99% chance, so it's not a 100% chance that I kill this, but I'm probably gonna kill this. And look, I only lost one troop, so that, that's fairly good for me. So now that I've had a successful attack, I get cards. Now the goal in progressive is to wait as long as possible to turn in your cards, because every time someone turns in, you get more troops, essentially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two and I'll put it into this four. Now what I normally would have done is I'm gonna take in this six and put it right here, but you'll notice right here, I've got this little plus two. That's because that shows me that I own this card, okay? This is Venezuela. So if I click this little graph and click this right here, what it does is it tells you what cards I own. So I own Venezuela and North Africa. Now, I do, I do not have the territory of North Africa right now, which is uh, inconsequential at the moment. But what I want to do is I want to stack my troops right here, okay? So I'm going to wait until um, I cash that set in until I move that set out. That way I can have that extra two troops without having to worry about fortif fortifying those troops off later. So what I'm going to do now, put a little bit more troops right there just to ensure that the bot doesn't break me, which he still could. He could add on to there and hit really hard. But I'm really not going to worry about that. So once again, not 100% roll, so this is probably not too smart to do, but we're going to try. And I got real lucky, and the reason I did that it's because it was worth the risk, because now I can take North America, which would give me five extra troops. So you'll notice I put this additional attack here so I don't have to worry about red hitting, and then I'm going to go right here. So now let's look at our cards. So this is a set on three. This is considered very lucky, but when you're in the first five rounds progressive, this isn't really important. But if this was the second round of five in progressive, in other words, like rounds six through ten, you could theoretically kill someone in progressive with this. Okay? But right now, because I just want to wait as long as possible to get the, to get the troops, it's not very important. So, you'll see the bots are going to start trading in sometime soon, and this number will start going up. Now, there is a school of thought in um, progressive to do what's called card skipping. So what happens when you're a, when you card skip is that you don't attack and you don't get a card because what happens when you get five cards you're forced to trade in and when you're forced to trade in someone who waited with their cards is going to get more. Now, when you're in a position that's strong like I am, like you've got two continents, it's actually kind of smart to card skip. But I'm already last in the order, so there's no point for me to card skip. So, for example, if I saw a red card skip, I would card skip all day because I know that I'm in a really strong position. The more people don't take cards, the more likely I am to win the game. So now, because I don't want either of these bots getting too strong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack out. Okay? So now that I did that, I broke, I broke both the bots' bonuses. And it makes it so they're not getting their troops, right? It's because this is a plus three and that's a plus five. I also don't have to worry about that big 12 getting attacker's advantage 
on my big stack. So you'll notice I now own four of these territories. Got pretty lucky with those cards. And by the way, uh, advice for new players. If you're doing this, a lot of people don't understand uh, how to get this up. Go to this little uh, graph here and hit this little player. This tells you the amount of troops each player has and it tells you the amount of territories each player has. So right now you would look and you'd say, well, green is the weakest player. Theoretically, if I wanted to, I could probably kill green this turn because I've just got so many troops. Okay? But I'm not going to do that because I just want to sit here and talk with you for a little bit. So right now I'm just strengthening my guard everywhere just to make sure that none of the bots can get in and break me. So now I'm just taking a card to pass. So now everybody's got five cards. Everybody's going to be forced to trade in. So you're going to see that he trades in four. And now the value went from four to six. Now you'll notice because I have these territories here, I can get two extra troops from those territories. Now, the negative part about this is because I hold so many, I can't use them all. I can only use whichever one is the leftmost up here. So whichever I feel is the most beneficial to go to the left, I'll do that. Okay? So right here, in progressive, I'm going to use these three cards right here. I will prefer to put my troops on North Africa, but I don't want to um, waste... Um, the Venezuela card as well, because I want that stack as well. Plus, it's smarter, smarter for me to use that three set. So I trade in, and I got um, eight additional troops for that. Okay, so I take a card. I'm not slaughtering right now. Don't crucify me, please. Uh, but um, if you look right here. And you will see that the AI difficulty is expert. That just means it's a little bit harder to deal with them attacking you and breaking your bonuses. Uh, card bonus is progressive. Already talked about the difference between progressive and fixed. So it looks like behind me the bot set in and completely smashed my, uh, my guard up here, which is no big deal. So what you need to look at right here is that there are... A whole bunch of game modes that we've yet to talk about. So alliances. What alliances do is if there's alliances, you would click on a player's name, and there would be a little blue and white button that pops up over here, and you would hit Make Alliance. And what that does is if you're in uh, a game, you can talk more with that player. You can communicate more. For example, you can say Attack Red to Green, or you can say Attack... Uh, attack green to red. Or you can attack my territory if you need to. Like if you want to tell someone, hey, it's advantageous for you to attack me, so go ahead and do it because it's going to help both of us. There are many uh, situations that we'll cover later that there's an example of that happening, but it's a little bit advanced for this discussion. So we'll talk about that at a different time. So this is not likely to succeed, but we're going to see. Got pretty lucky. So, um... They also, if you're playing what's called a Fog of War game, they allow you to see through the Fog of War. So what the Fog of War is, is if you were playing a Fog of War game, you would only be able to see, to see the territories adjacent to your own. So for example, if I was playing Fog of War, the only things I would see would be this, 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 this. No, actually, no, I wouldn't be able to see that one. I'd only be able to see this, 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 and that. That would be all the territories I would be able to see. So, what you really need to do in a game that has Fog of War is keep track of these little dice right here. So if you click this little dice symbol up here, or die technically, you will need to keep track of how many troops each player is getting. So if you look right here, it says this player started their turn with three troops total. What that tells you is that that troop is below 12 territories and they hold no bonuses. That tells you they might be killable. Specifically if you're playing uh, a game mode like Caps, which we will get into later. Um, you also have Blizzards. What Blizzards are, is they are territories that pop up on the map that make that territory impassable. Now, what is really important about that is that um, 
it can really affect how you determine to play a game. Now, what it can't do, it cannot completely section off a portion of the map because that would make it so you could just win the game because no one could kill you. You could also have um, portals. So what portals are is they're little blue circles that open up on territories and they connect to other blue circles throughout the map. So it adds an additional layer. So if you're a really good player, generally what you want to do is you do want to have blizzards and you want to have fog of war on because that creates a skill gap for players who don't know what they're doing. Another thing is you generally want to have turn timers on. So if you look up a uh, turn timer, it's off for this game. Generally speaking, when you play a ranked game, most people like to have a turn timer of 60 seconds, which drastically affects new, newer players. Because what newer players don't know is if you go into settings, you need to make sure that camera animations are turned off because it makes it really hard to attack fast. Another thing that affects how fast you attack is that some players play on their phones, and it's much it's easier to attack when you're on a computer. Because with a computer, I can just... Click, enter, enter, click, enter, enter. Now, what happens if I had to split my troops off, right? I want to uh, guard more here, right? So I put, I don't know, seven troops here. Okay? Now, I can enter the fortify phase and take my the rest of my troops back here. Okay? And do know that I didn't have a set on three, so I couldn't have traded in and killed someone right there if I was playing an actual player. So when you are playing um, progressive, what you need to keep track of is how many cards each player has. So generally considered really unlucky not to get a set on four. If you don't have a set on four in a progressive game, you are most likely uh, going to die if it's not in the first turn. Okay, so um, the first turn doesn't really matter because everybody waits till five cards and no one has enough troops to do anything but like when i say turn i mean sets of five right so the first set of five is i, I kind of refer to as the first turn sometimes the second set of five is the second turn right so if i killed green right now what i could do is i could get his four cards and because in risk you are not allowed to have over five cards you force trade in so a mistake a lot of new, newer players make is they would see something like, for example, if red was really weak right now, and I was like the medium player, some really bad new players will try to kill a really weak player and lose a lot of troops to do so. But if I were to kill red, the negative aspect of that is I would lose troops, and then I would only get one card, which would leave me with four. And then I would get another card after my turn, which would leave me with a five. So I couldn't cash that into my next turn. And the other players in the game will look at that and they'll be like, that's a great kill for five cards. Because you just weakened yourself with the, the low amount of troops you already had. Now you're the lowest player in the game with five cards. People will risk just about everything they have to kill you. Because it would essentially secure the win for themselves. So make sure that when you kill someone, you are either in the distant troop lead or you're going to set in, okay? And then another newer setting is inactivity behavior. So a disturbing trend in Risk is when players are playing a ranked game, is they'll uh, fake like they're getting offline to remove themselves from being seen as a threat in the game. So if someone leaves the game, what inactivity behavior does is it just puts troops equally distributed on all of that player's territory. So a good example of when this might happen is if there's three players left in the game and it's a stalemate, but one player's kind of got the edge over the other two players. That one player might pretend to leave and let the stronger player hit the weaker player and then come back in about five minutes when they've warred out and weakened each other and then just wipe the board. So what this does is it makes it so that bot won't be attacking and you can just break in the bot and not have to worry about it getting more and more strong. Okay? So let's go ahead and fortify back. So now we've got the basics of the game pretty much covered. So now we're going to see how we play this. So 
Now, just because I'm going to start playing it like intelligently now, I'm going to show you how to win this game fairly quickly. So right now, I'm very unlucky. Look, unlucky. I do not have a set on four cards, but I can still kill people, especially because red is generously hitting all of green for me. So right here, when I'm calculating the amount of troops I need, what I generally do is I add up the total number of troops, the total number of territories, and add around four troops on top of that, okay? So I've got three troops, I've got three territories, so I'm gonna put six for that, and then I'm gonna just do eight, just because it's a little bit uh, less risky when you're attacking ones. Once again, if you're on time, if you're time limited, I suggest just forget about the, the slider, but right now I'm not time limited, so I'm just gonna go ahead, slider, and do know that sometimes the slider will drop down the number of troops you use, so make sure you always check it. This is why it's not always best for when you're in a rush, but there are some players that'll set it to about seven or eight troops, so they can run through about 21 spots without having to worry about having to readjust the slider. So now, I really didn't lose many troops at all there. This gets more and more risky the more and more troops you go through. That's why you just generally try to be as risk averse as you possibly can. Um, you generally um, want to make sure that you secure the kill even if it means you kind of waste a few troops in the process. It's kind of up to your your judgment, though, because... Well, that was... I, I've got... That's how you uh, play Risk very, very poorly. But thankfully, uh, now that I remember to reset my slider, a pr prime example of what not to do is forget to reset your slider, is you can kill that 7 on 3 with 100%, and then you kill Green. So now Green just had 5 cards, because he's really unlucky. Now, this is... In any prog game, this is an instant win move. Because I was just on four cards, and he had five. So I get, get, get what's called a double trade-in. So this is going to be an easy-peasy win for me. So look how many troops I get. So he has got 27, and I just traded in for 27 right there. So I put in one troop right there. Put in one, all the rest of my troops right there. Kill him here. A big mistake some players make is they forget like one territory that's just kind of sectioned off. And make sure when you know you've got a kill on someone before you do the kill that you are making sure you get your pathing right. So you see how Japan's kind of out of the way? Sometimes when the troops are tight, you want to make sure that you don't have to split. So I'll give you an example of what a split is, right? So if I attack here, and I get a bad pathing. Oh, look, I accidentally forgot to hit Japan. So now I've got to do this because I've got to leave at least three troops over here because I had three attacking troops uh, when I when I hit there, so I had to leave at least three there. Okay. Once again, I'm not going to do the slider because I'm assuming, hey, this is a real game. I'd be playing with 60 seconds, so I'm just going through. So I've almost got him killed. I'm going to pause for a second. So let's just say I get him down to the very last territory, right? And I don't have enough to kill that last little that last little thing, right? What I need to do is I need to make sure that he cannot get a card. Okay? So this is what's called it, it, card blocking. Okay? So when you get down to these last couple territories, especially in a stalemated game, very, very late, or there's a specific game mode called Caps, card blocking becomes very, very important. Because I hold the whole map in a progressive game. If he doesn't get cards, he cannot beat me. Okay? So if I can just sit here for 20 turns and eventually I generate him. Now, in this game, this really isn't going to be an issue. This is really mainly an issue in Caps games. And we'll explain why that is in a second. So he's about to die, and we're about to die. So that's world domination. I conquered the whole territory, so I won. That's my battle points. 
So this is my rank, my leaderboard, all of that good stuff. This is just an alternate name that I'm anonymous under. So what are the many different game modes? There are World Domination, which we just played, Speed Blitz, 70% Domination, Zombie Apocalypse, and Capital Conquest. So, I have never played Speed Blitz, so I actually don't know what it is, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Most people I know don't play it just because it's kind of an offshoot. You can play one-on-one -on -one risk, but most people don't tr consider that tried and true risk. A lot of the people who are super concerned about rank, who are not me, generally like to play um, Capital Conquest with progressive cards and then only play with three or four players. Because as you scale up in risk, it's a multi multiplicative difficulty multiplier. Okay, So what that means is that with each player you add to a risk game, it gets harder and harder and harder. Whereas if you only have four, it's significantly less hard because the, the, the players can't team you and it's just significantly easier and more predictable to play against four players. So what 70% domination is, is you will try to hold 70% of the map. Whoever holds 70% of the map first will win. So it's a very unique game mode. It's pretty interesting. Zombie Apocalypse, I don't really like that much just because um, one crazy thing happening can ruin your whole game. So what happens with the Zombie Apocalypse is just what it sounds like. So you have zombies, and they will infect a territory at random at the start of the map. So when they infect that territory, it could be your territory, it could be someone else's, they will start attacking out from it. Every troop that they kill gets added to their army because they're zombies. They will only attack your territory if they have two times your troops. So the way to win Zombie Apocalypse is to just stack up your troops. Now, the negative part about that is if you stack all of your troops into one territory, theoretically, if you're really, really, really unlucky, unlucky the zombies can hit that one territory and infect it, which would be really unfortunate. Okay? So zombies, the, the super unique part about them is when they fortify their troops, they pretty much equally fortify them everywhere. And they fortify like 70 times. So they could have like 100 troops, but each territory is going to be like, if they got 20 territories, it'll be like five, five troops on each territory. Then you have Capital Conquest. Capital Conquest, I do like it because it is highly, highly, highly skewed towards the good player. Specifically, progressive Capital Conquest. Because it doesn't matter how bad the other players are, because all you have to do in Capital Conquest is get a capital. So at the start of the game, you will place your capital wherever you want to on the territories that you're given. And you attack, you put all your troops on your capital, and you attack off of it, and you get a card. And you keep attacking off your capital, and keep stacking on it, and you could have no bonus all game, you could war with no one all game, and you would probably get second, if you're good enough, okay? There, there's a lot of moving parts to that, but if you just stack on your cap, generally speaking, you could go on that game forever. The special part about this game mode when it comes to rank is when you play with blizzards and fog. Because when you have a capital, you get two additional troops, it's really easy to tell when people are really close to dying. So at the start of the game, if you have under 12 territories and you have a capital and you exist, you'd have five troops. So what you'll notice is at about uh, round 10, which I call turn t the end of turn two because each set of five, you'll start to see people get to three troops, which means they're really close to dying. So you can attack off of your cap and go find them and kill them and get a lot of cards. Now there are two schools of thought when you play Capital Conquest, specifically when you play with blizzards. One is to have your capital in the middle of everything like, for example, a good cap in uh, the map we just played would be in the middle of Asia. Just because it's in the middle of everything, it's almost always going to be open. The second school of thought, like I said, specifically when you're playing with blizzards, is to put your cap in a place that cordons off like half the map. Because then you hold a fixed bonus. I generally like the 
cordon off half the map, Cap. Because what you'll find is in cap uh, conquest, you're going to play with people and they're going to over-attack on their caps. You're going to see them attack like 10 times round one, which means their cap's really weak and they're going to lose their cap to someone. Or you get an easy kill. Then you can uh, kind of get another cap to work off of and take cards. So the negative part about my strategy is that if you get stuck in that position until the late game, it's very easy to get card blocked. Because... If you, for example, uh, if you were to put your capital in uh, North Australia in the last map, and you hold the Australia bonus, I think it's actually called Indonesia, or si you could also talk about Siam. If you were to put your capital there and get card blocked, like in other words, people let you um, have your own territories connected to your cap to where you can't attack off of it, they make it so you can't do anything. So you have to take all your troops off cap and then they can attack them and kill you. Now, what makes capitals so strong? Capitals get defenders advantage. So what happens is with capitals, if you attack a capital, the defenders get to roll three dice. So it nullifies that attacker's advantage we talked about earlier. So when you attack a cap, it's generally considered you need at least double the amount of troops that are on that cap to have a chance of attacking it. Now, you can get super, super, super lucky, but there's been a time where I lost about three times the amount of troops that, well, that was on the caps. I think I attacked with like 110 against the 40, and I lost like all my troops, and he had like 12 troops left over. Sometimes you get real unlucky I like that. Okay? And then there's one thing that I did not uh, talk about earlier, which is unstable portals. So with unstable portals, what will happen is um, that they, they will be completely random, and they will cycle in and out throughout the game. So they'll start off in round one, and it'll be red. Then in the next round, it'll become blue, and it'll be quote-unquote open. People can attack through it and out of it to other spaces holding portals. Then after that, they will close and move to another spot. So essentially every two rounds, you have another cycle of a portal, okay? And then, if I didn't talk about this, there's also true random dice, which means one, uh, one dice could theoretically kill 100 troops. Most people don't like that just because it adds too much of a factor of luck into the equation. So, if you have any questions, uh, please leave uh, them in the comments below. Uh, feel free to take, check out our Twitch and YouTube, subscribe, follow, all of the necessary things. And prepare yourself to get welcome to the kitchen. We like to cook up a lot of great things for you here at Mr. Splotula Gaming. Thanks and have a good day.